We have other videos on individual techniques for factoring quadratics. But what I would like to do in this video is get some practice figuring out which technique to use. So I'm going to write a bunch of quadratics. And I encourage you to pause the video, try to see if you can factor that quadratic yourself before I work through it with you. So the first quadratic is 6x squared plus 3x. So pause and see if you can factor this. So this one might jump out at you that both of these terms here have a common factor. Both of them are divisible by 3. 6 is divisible by 3, and so is 3. And both of them are divisible by x. So you can factor out a 3x. So if you factor out a 3x, 6x squared divided by 3x, you're going to have a 2x left over there. And then 3x divided by 3x, you're going to have a 1. And that's about as much as we can actually factor it. And you can verify that these two expressions are the same. If you distribute the 3x, 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times 1 is 3x. And that's all we would do. We would be done. That's all you can do to really factor that. And as we'll see, in this example, trying to factor out a common factor was all we had to do. But as we'll see in future examples, that's usually a good first step. Do all of check whether the terms have a common factor, and if they do, it never hurts to factor that out. So let's do another example. Let's say I have the quadratic 4x squared minus 4x minus 48. Pause the video and try to factor that as much as you can. All right, so the first thing you might have noticed is that there is a common factor amongst the terms. All of them are divisible by 4. 4 is clearly divisible by 4, and 48 is also divisible by 4. So let's factor a 4 out. This would be the same thing as 4 times x squared minus x minus 12. I just divided each of these by 4, and I factored it out. You can distribute the 4 and verify that these two expressions are the same. Now, are we done? Well, no, we can factor what we have inside the parentheses. We can factor this further. Now, how would we do that? So over here, the key realization is, all right, I have a 1 as a coefficient on my second degree term. I've written it in standard form, where I have the second degree, and then if there's a first degree term, and then I have a constant term, or my zero degree term. And if I have a 1 coefficient right over here, then I say, OK, are there two numbers whose sum equals the coefficient on the first degree term, on the x term. So are there two numbers that add up to negative 1? You didn't see a 1 here before, but we, it's implicit there. Negative x is the same thing as negative 1x. So are there two numbers, a plus b, that is equal to negative 1, and whose product is equal to negative 12? This is a technique that we do in other videos. And here the key is to realize that, hey, maybe we can use it here. So a times b is equal to negative 12. And there's a couple of key realizations here. It's like, OK, if I have two numbers and their product is going to be a negative, that means one of them, that means they're going to have different signs. One's going to be positive and one's going to be negative. If they had the same sign, then this would be positive. So let's think about the factors of 12, and especially think about them in terms of different sign combinations. So you could think about 1 and 12. And whether you're thinking about negative 1 and 12, negative 1 plus 12 would be positive 11. If you went the other way around, if you went negative 12 and 1, it would be negative 11. But either way, that doesn't work. 2 and 6, negative 2 and 6 would be 4. Negative 6 and 2 would be negative 4, so that doesn't work. 3 and 4. Let's see, negative 3 and 4 would be positive 1. But 3 and negative 4 works out. You add these two together, you take their product, you clearly get negative 12. And then you add them together, you get negative 1. So we can write inside the parentheses. So let me write, so there's going to be 4 times. So we can factor that as two binomials. The first is going to be x plus, the first is going to be x plus 3. And then the next is going to be, we could say x plus negative 4, or we could say x minus 4. And we're done. And if any of this seems intimidating to you, I encourage you to watch the videos on introduction to factoring polynomials. The key here is to recognize the method. So once again, at first, try to factor out any common factors. We did that in both examples. And then we saw here, hey, if we have a leading one coefficient here on the second degree term, and we have it written in standard form, well, let's think of two numbers that add up to this coefficient and whose product is equal to the constant term. And in this case, it was 3 and negative 4. We were able to factor it this way. We proved that in other videos. 
Let's do another example. We can't get enough practice. And like always, pause the video and see if you can work through it yourself. 3x squared plus 30 plus 75. All right, I'm assuming you had a go at it. So you might immediately see that all of the terms are divisible by 3. So let's factor 3 out. So it's going to be 3 times x squared plus, oh, whoops, this should be an x here. My apologies. Pause the video again and see if you can do it <laughs> now that I wrote the actual th right thing there. All right, so. As, as you imagine, it's nice to factor out a 3 first. So it's 3 times x squared plus 10x plus 25. And so you might immediately say, all right, well, let's use the technique we had here. We have a leading one coefficient. It's written in standard form. Can I think of two numbers that add up to 10? So a plus b is equal to 10, and whose product, a times b, is equal to 25. And this would work. And if you look at the, the factors of 25, You'd say, all right, well, you know, this thing here is positive, this is positive, so I'm dealing with two positive numbers. And well, to get 25, it's either 1 and 25 or 5 and 5. And 5 and 5 match this. 5 plus 5 is equal to 10. 5 times 5 is equal to 25. And so just using the exact technique we just did, you'd say, okay, this is 3 times, and the stuff in parentheses would be x plus 5 times x plus 5. Or you could say 3 times x plus 5 squared. So some of you might have immediately said, well, I don't have to do that exact technique. I could have immediately recognized this as a perfect square, because I have a square constant right over here. And that's a good sign that, hey, maybe I should explore whether this is going to be a perfect square polynomial. So if this is a perfect square, and if I were to take the square root of it, and this coefficient is twice that square root, well, that's a good sign that I'm probably dealing, or that I am dealing with a perfect square. But either way, whether you recognize it as a perfect square or whether you use the technique that we use in the second problem, either one of those would get you to the appropriate answer.